Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Crochet Ridge Textured Cowl. We already have the hat filmed if you need it and it's available on this particular channel. So today we're going to focus just on the cowl. You're going to need just over two balls of this for the cowl. I've done half of it and I've already used the second ball when I haven't actually finished half of it. So I'd recommend it's just two and a bit balls. Also the hat is just one and a bit balls just two. You need that bit in order to do the pom pom. So it's a really easy pattern. The cowl if you were to ask me which one is easier the cowl is the one that's easier because there's no reduction that's needed and it's a really simple pattern to be able to follow. So it's, it's going to start for the cowl on page number two. So of course I flip the page and it's not number two. And we're going to start all the way over here right on the edge. I'm going to show you half of the sample. So I've got half of it already crocheted and let's talk about this and this is what's coming up next. So this is half the cowl. So this is half the height and then it repeats itself. So I got here this is row number 21 and then it says to repeat a set amount of rows all the way back to 21. So it's actually two layers of this. This is a really easy pattern to be able to follow. It's in multiples of 10. So if you wanted to change it and you wanted something bigger just keep going in multiples of 10. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. When you're happy with it then you form the ring and then you get it done. So if you wanted it even tighter for a child size then obviously don't do um, the amount that is suggesting and just make it tighter. So today what I'm gonna do is two multiples of 10. So only 20. So it's just gonna be a, like a tubular shape uh, in order to do that and that's something you can also do this if you wanted to for leggings. If, if that appeals to you at all. Um, you just have to figure out how many um, multiples of 10 that you want to do and that it try it on your calves. Um, I can put suggestions but you know I'm overweight so my calves and uh, because I'm a male too uh, may be bigger than a woman's calf. So I can't tell you that number off the top of my head. So I'm going to show you the principles. I'm gonna take you through rows number one through 21 and then you can repeat and this is rows number one through 21. I have to do it one more time for my sample before it's complete. If you wanna stop at any time because height is too much for you you can do that and uh, once you get it done you can see it. it's great and it will stretch and it's doubling up on itself so that it's a nice um, thick particular material and the inside actually looks pretty cool too. So let's uh, begin grab your five millimeter size H crochet hook and let's get playing. The color that you see is Red Heart Heat Wave and the color is Beach Ball. So let's begin today. Start with the slip knot. You need to chain 90. I'm only gonna do two sets of 10. So I'm only gonna do 20 just to get, just show you how it's done. It repeats every 10 stitches. So it doesn't matter how big that you make it as long as it stays in 10's. So just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And it says carefully don't twist the chain. So what I would do after 10, just pull it off the hook and put your hook into the beginning one and then carry on and continue. So just let it droop and then therefore it won't twist on you. So, um, so 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. When, once you get all the way to 90, so just stop me here and go all the way to 90 and once you have that done just pull through and through like this and therefore you'll have it and then your chain should not be twisted either. Let's begin row number, round number one and make sure you have your stitches ready to go. So round number one is the only round with single crochet in it. So just chaining up one. Going in the back hump of the chain itself just you see it exposed and you just wanna do one single crochet in each of the back humps going all the way around. That's all you need to do. So just one single crochet in each one of the chains. If you're off by one you can always correct it in the next round and uh, I'll show you how to do that too because you know life's not perfect and we end up with some mistakes like that. So um, just one single crochet in each of the chains. Once you're all the way around the chain clearly yours will be longer and then you're just going to slip stitch to the beginning. So like the hat just get it ready. Make sure there's no weird twists on it so it's laying flat like a, a belt of a, of a fan belt of a car and making sure it's nice and flat so there's no weird twists. So you're going to begin round number two. So round number two we're then going to start the, la uh, the layering effect with using post work. So you're going to chain three. Remember just like the hat the chain three doesn't count as anything in this pattern. It's a builder so don't mistake that for doing um, your 
your work with that. So right where you joined was the very first single crochet. You only wanna play within the post itself. And so in round number two here, we're going to do one double crochet front post around the next single crochet and then one double crochet back post around the next nine. So that gives you the answer of ten. So go in the front post. So side of the stitch, it's a single crochet only, in, pull through, pull through two and two and that's technically your first stitch. So the next nine will each be a back post. So coming from the back side and then back out to the other. It's gonna be tight because it is a single crochet that's there. They've done that on purpose so that it keeps everything nice and tight. So continuing on the back posts only, you're gonna do nine in a row and once you have your nine done, you're gonna switch back just for one stitch and put it on the front post and then continue in that same manner. So then the next nine are on the back post once again. So you'll do that all the way around and this is round number two. When you're coming all the way back around, the last nine here should be a back post double crochet. Now if you had one extra left over, then what happens is that you can just put two uh, back posts together so that they become one. And if you're a short one, you can always put two around one post here and make it that way as well. So when you go to join, just like the hat, you're going to join to the top of the first front post double crochet. So you never attach to a chain three, that's just a builder. And then we're gonna move up now into row number three. You're going to start seeing how the pattern uh, is going to work out and you'll be able to visually see what you need to do as well. So there's not a lot of obsessive counting. So let's just chain three to begin. This is round number three and we're going to one double crochet around the first two. So it's this one that's already a front post and then the next one we're gonna pull forward. So let's just do those two first. So it's a front post double crochet. You should be able to access it easier now. And then the remaining are going to be a back post until you get to that front post that you see right here. So every time you get to a front post, that's where you stop and you repeat this pattern again. So it'll be two in the beginning and then the rest are back posts. When you get to this one, it's the two again, then a front post and then the remaining are back posts. And you'll do that all the way around. So please do this now. This is round number three and you will see that this will work out and it gets a lot easier the more that you do because you, the more you can understand the pattern. When you get all the way back around, you've just done your back posts. Remember the chain three does not count as anything, so don't count that. And then you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning front post double crochet. Round number four, we're gonna continue. So you're gonna start seeing that this is going to start picking up and building up and going up on an angle. And this also, this indentation that you will have will also start decreasing, but also decreasing on an angle. Let's begin number four. You're gonna chain up three, counts as nothing. So this time the first three are going to be a front post double. There was only two last time, now it's three. Just like that. Then the remaining of these back posts will stay back posts until you hit this front one again and then the next three are front posts and then the remaining are back posts and you'll keep doing that all the way around. This is round number four and I'll see you at the end of round number four. So I've just joined it on the end of number four. Number five, let's begin. Chain three counts as nothing. And then the first four in a row then will be a front post double crochet. So let's make those front post double. Do you see that I don't need to necessarily count. I just know that the first one that appears in the back post needs to be a front post this time. And you can start seeing the angling is happening. Now the remaining now will be a back post until you get to these front posts again and then again these will stay front posts plus you'll add another one so you have four in a row and then the remaining are back posts. And you'll keep doing that same patterning going all the way around. This is round number five. Okay so I've just joined number five and let's move on to number six. So this time six what do you think? It's going to be chaining three counts as nothing and so this time it'll be five in a row that will each be a front post double crochet. Make sure you wrap the hook first. And then the remaining back posts will stay back posts again. So again just look at it and say okay well you know what I know I have to increase. So that was my last one here that's in the front post so I have to bring up one back post forward. So then you have your five and then the remaining are back posts. Once you get to the front post again, again the next five uh, in these front posts will then be front posts so the four plus then you'll bring one forward and then the remaining back posts and you'll keep alternating that all the way around. This is round number six. Let's move on to number seven. I've already did the join chain three. 
we're gonna keep that diagonal going up and so this time it'll be a total of six front post treble or double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the last one comes forward and then the remaining are back post double crochet and then when you get the front post again, again six in a row will be front post and then the remaining back and you'll keep doing that all the way around. Number eight, let's move on. So chain three counts as nothing. In number eight, you're then continuing and making more front posts. So you're going and it's double uh, front post double crochet in the next seven. So again, you just keep adding more and then the remaining back post uh, double crochet stay as a back post and then you'll continue then around and then the next set of front posts you'll make sure that there is seven. So this is the seventh here and pulling that forward. There's the back post and then just carry on and you really can start seeing it now. So let's begin. Uh, sorry, continue that. This is round number eight. Okay, round number nine. Just gonna talk it out. So just gonna chain three and there's gonna be eight front post double crochets. The remaining are going to be back post double crochet and when you get the, to this section again, again eight front post double crochet and then the remaining two are just double cro uh, back post double crochet. Sorry, <laughs> front post double crochet is all good. So continue that. This is number eight or sorry, this is number nine. I don't even know if I'm coming or going. So there we go, number nine. Let's move on to round number 10, chaining up three. Again, counts as nothing. So then the first nine will each be a front post double crochet and then it will leave just one back post double crochet left to do. So do that as a back post and then you'll have your new set. So just do nine in a row and then a back post and then continue that same pattern going all the way around. This is round number 10. Round number 11, you're gonna chain three, counts as nothing. Round number 11 is the halfway point. You can see the turn there. So th the entire uh, item around is just one front post double crochet in each. So there's no back posting at all and then we're going to the, continue then into round number 12 where we're gonna start establishing the other side and start losing these front post double crochets and these gapping spaces will pick back up or sorry these uh, kind of like back posts will start picking back up. So just one uh, front post double crochet around each stitch then for round number 11. So now that we have gone all the way around with the front post double crochet in round number 11, this now we're gonna start picking up and we've been doing front post double crochet as we start around but now we're gonna start going into the back side. So we're gonna chain up one, two, three and you're going to make the first one as a back post double crochet and then the next nine in a row will each be a front post double crochet. So as you're building this out, these back post double crochets will start building out like they did here. So they're getting more and more as we're continuing around. So just the first one is a back post double crochet. The next nine are front post double crochet and you keep repeating that pattern going all the way around. So the next one after that then would be a back post and then nine front posts. And I'll see you at the end of round number 12. Let's move on to round number 13, chain three doesn't count as anything. So the first two will be back post double crochet. So the first one already is and so then we'll pull back that front post and make it the next one and make it a uh, back post double crochet this time. And then the remaining ones then and you can physically see it now. See this back post. So you'll do a front post double crochet until you hit that spot and then the next two will be back post and then the remaining is front post and you keep doing that all the way around. So let's uh, continue this pattern and this is round number 13. Continue then to round number 14. So chain up three counts as nothing. So then the first three are back post double crochet. The remaining are front post. Then the next three when you run into it, the first two already are. You make those three a back post double crochet and the remaining are front post double crochet. So this is a round number 14 and by this point in the tutorial you should actually be able to almost not even have to play the rest of this. This is kind of like the, the motion of it. So when you get to round number 21 you'll be repeating this pattern again going all the way from round two to 21 so you have two sets. So you're gonna start seeing that it will in, do an indentation like it was here as you're building it up here. So let's continue this and this is round number 14. Let's start round number 15 chain up three counts as nothing. So then this time the first four 
will each be a back post double crochet. So this one goes back and then the remaining are front posts and then when you see this again the first four are back posts and then the remaining are front posts. So do this. This is round number 15. Let's move on to 16. Chain 3 doesn't count as anything. So you guess it. The next 5 are gonna be a back post double crochet. The remaining are front posts. When you get to that transition again the next 5 are back and then the next 5 are front posts and you keep doing that all the way around. Let's do this. This is round number 16. Round number 17, chain 3. Yes, you're right. And you are going to then put the next 6. So the first 5 are back posts. So add the 6 one to make it a back post. The remaining are then our front posts. Once you get to that transition, again 6 in a row are back posts and then the remaining are front posts and do that all the way around. This is round number 17. Let's go for number 18. You're gonna chain 3. And in 18, the next 7 in a row are each a back post. So you're gonna take that seventh one and make it a back post. The remaining three that are left are front posts that you have and then you have the transition. So another seven back and the remaining three are front and you keep doing that all the way around. This is round number 18. Let's move on to number 19. So chain up three. You know the drill. It doesn't count as anything. 19. There's gonna be eight back post double crochet in a row. So you'll take that the one and make it a back post. The remaining two are front posts and then you'll get the transitions to the next eight are back posts and then the next two are front posts and you'll do that all the way around. This is round number 19. Okay, let's go on to number 20. There's only two more rounds. This one and 21 left and then you'll do a repeat pattern. You can see that the tubular shape is taking effect. It's so tubular, right? Eh? So let's uh, continue to 20. So chain up three doesn't count as anything. The first nine now are going to be a back post double crochet. You will take that, that eighth one and make it a back post and then this last one will be on its own as a front post. So it'll be nine and then one front post. So nine back posts, one front post. You'll do that all the way around for round number 21. And finally number 21 we're going to chain up three counts as nothing and in this case every item going around is a back post double crochet. So if you recall halfway through everything was a front post uh, double crochet. So this is the other other side. So everything is a back post double crochet. And when we look at row number two if you recall it's just gonna be one front post double crochet by itself and then the remaining uh, nine are back posts and you're just gonna continue to build it out. So if you recall way down here it started off as one and then it started coming over and doing this again. So when we look at the major sample just like you see so right now on this we're up here. So you'll start and then you'll create, you have these gaps that you've created that you see and it'll be shifting over. So technically you have a half of like, a, it's like a sailboat flag here. You'll have a full um, section right here that will look like this but, uh, but it will be indentated in and then you'll end up with another half that will appear on the other side of this when it's uh, done. So you just have to reverse back to row number two after you've done this and then restart and then that's it for this cowl. It's actually a really easy cowl to do and uh, yeah. So that's it. Have a good one. It's Mike on behalf of Your Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. Bye bye. <laughs>